Welcome back to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Today's episode, powered by Hayabusa, is a new series we're starting, which is striker versus grappler debates. And our first topic today is gonna to be closing distance. All right, welcome back to Bazooka Kickboxing. I'm excited to start a new series on the channel, which is gonna be a grappler versus striker debates. And no better person to bring in than Professor Richard Monkey Nanku, who is a big role model for me getting into martial arts as a kid. He's also my grappling professor, Canadian MMA pioneer, and one of the top black belts in Canada. So for me, it's a great honor to have Professor on the channel. Welcome. It's an honor to be here. All right, so let's get into the big debate. Now, the first thing I'm gonna talk about if I'm, fighting a grappler, right? And I get this a lot. You gotta think, coming from bazooka kickboxing in the MMA world, everybody's trying to take us down. So I've been able to develop these strategies for many years. So my first thing which I teach my strikers against the grappler is body language. Now, we've seen a lot of good Muay Thai or kickboxers come in with this nice tall frame. You gotta change your body language. I need to lower my base. It's with a lower base, if they do get to my legs, one, it's a little bit easier for me to sprawl lower my base. And the other thing is my hand position. I don't want to keep a high guard. One, it's not the best for defending small gloves, but with the high guard, with my elbow up, it's easy for the grappler to get to my legs at this point. So I like to have more of a dynamic guard here and a lower base where I'm constantly moving my feet. That's my point one, all right? So Joseph, you, you uh, raise a very good point there. It's body posture and where this elbow is placed is really what I want to pay attention to. If your guard is really, really high, I'm going to try to get you to move forward so your hip always starts moving towards me. If your hip is always moving towards me, I can access that a little bit quicker. But I also want to pay attention to the striker. I can't just always have my hands down. My hands still have to cover my head. I don't want my head taken off. Okay, so now, first things first. If I'm going to be jabbing, that is my second thing, right? So my body language is low, but with me striking now, right, I want to do what's called called probing strikes. So by probing and feinting, even if I'm moving forward or backwards, I want to make it difficult and I want to have some strikes to make the grappler really think twice about shooting on my legs. So I do a lot of probing jabs, probing straights, but a main thing for me is I feint shots up the middle. So I'll feint uppercuts, I can feint knees, I can feint front kicks. So that's my second way to keep you off of me. If I have to fight uh, a stand-up fighter that's always moving backwards, will never move forward on me, I want to have my uh, opponent be very, very defensive. So I do have to have some decent striking skills too. I want to be able to put pressure on my opponent's arms. I want to be able to kick properly too. I don't want to just go in and not know what I'm doing. I don't want to just be a, a grappler that has no stand-up at all. But if I have you, and I'm getting you to move backwards, I really need to occupy my opponent's defense. If my opponent's defense right, is primarily going for the takedown, then I should be open to go for headshots and good leg kicks. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good point because if they can throw strikes, I think that's the main thing for grapplers. They have to have that little bit of striking because for me, when I have a grappler who can strike and they start throwing punches to my head, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna punch up here, which again, gets me that high guard which allows them to get underneath me. So this is why, again, as the striker, it's important to be able to, be able to move your feet. So when a punch does come, I don't wanna defend here like we're used to because we can go under, I move my feet. So as soon as I punch here and I anticipate I'm moving, I'm backstepping. Now with someone very quick, when I backstep, all right, I can switch my feet and then I start creating angles right away. That is the main thing, okay? So backstepping to angles is what I teach. Now, how does that look for you? Because a lot of good grapplers, they say, one, as soon as I switch, that's when you can come in pressure. So what do you think of the backstep into the lateral? So board? primarily, and for the basics of a grappler, doing high tie-ups and aiming for the legs, it really gives away your body posture and you can't can't really strike from those positions. Not so you can't strike, but you give away a lot. and You, you change your angle on, on really trying to knee somebody or, or strike somebody. If I'm looking for a low leg, it's very difficult to go, go high. If I'm getting a high tie up, it's very difficult to have like good strikes. So what I primar uh, primarily do is get to the hips. If I can get to the hips and get your hips locked in and get my elbows nice and tight, then I'm not really so worried about what kind of strikes you're hitting at when I'm closing the distance. For you to get a very effective strike, you need that little bit of distance. So if I can close a distance by you, one of two things, overextending yourself while you're moving forward, yep. I can get to your hips. Or if I start attacking nice and high and your guard's high, then I can get to your hips. But once I do get to your hips, that's most important for me is to stay stuck to them and keep my head pinched as close as I can. I don't like to be pushed off or, or, or hit, hit away so my arms extend. 
And that third point is actually the point you made is my third point, which is not overextending my strikes, right? So if I, one, overthrow a right hand, my body language, my weight's on the front foot. I can't move at this point, right? So even if I overextend a jab and they can parry that and get underneath, it's very easy for them. Or if I overthrow hooks, I'm exposing my back. I don't want to expose that at all. So when I do throw my strikes, I'm more controlled here. I keep my shoulders square. As soon as I overextend my shoulder, that starts being an overthrowing. So I want to keep my shoulders more square. So again, I'll throw a right hand from here, not overextending this way, which is a good point because as Professor said, the overthrowing of the strike makes it difficult. But the same thing with this striker versus grappler debate, every point I heard was he needs to strike to get inside, right? So how are you getting inside without using my side of being a striker? But for you, not to be taken down. Stay Every point away. you made was to have contact and break away from me. So you are technically grappling too. Okay, well, if I go inside, <laughs> how are you going? So I want one last point here. Okay. What do you have to do to get inside? I'm occupying, I'm using my footwork, I'm using all three strategies that I just told you. What are you doing to get inside to take me down? If I'm left with you're not putting pressure on me and you're having low, uh, a low tight guard, mm -hmm. Well, there's not really much striking you can do effectively to like really think. So I can sort of play a little bit in there. I sort of have, if you're totally committed to staying on the outside, just having heavy strikes and being tall, then I can be decent. But if you have to be a little bit apprehensive on your striking, then I can be a little more uh, aggressive with my takedowns. Okay, so how are you getting inside then? Are you shooting singles on me? You can't get inside. If I'm shooting singles on you, what I'm... What are you doing? How are you getting inside to take me down? How are you going to win this fight? Make you move forward. What if I don't move forward? You have to move forward. Yeah. You're always moving forward. Okay, so then I'm going moving forward, and what are you doing? Moving forward when you step forward. You have to step forward. You have to step forward if I keep backing off. I'm your target. I make easy so targets. me in. Yeah, I, me th in. this would be the easiest way to describe that. I would draw you in. Okay. I would draw you in. I would give you easy targets, but not let you land them uh, cleanly. What about these young kids who are just shooting for the ankles? A lot of those guys are a lot of very heavy wrestlers you'll see for stuff like that. But if they get sprawled on, they're going to be in trouble. So you find a good boxer with decent wrestling. He doesn't even really need good legs. But he's going to really give a good grapple uh, a very difficult time. There was a good fight this weekend with Charles Jourdain versus Paul yes. Gracie. Same kind of strategy. Jourdain was very square, very sharp. And another good point I didn't mention, he didn't kick at all that fight. He only did at the end when he was more confident, but me using my kicks is a good mm. entry for you. So it's a very good entry because I can kick. Uh, uh, for somebody trying to push the groundwork, trying to bring it to the ground, you find your opponent stuck on one leg. It's a little bit easier to bring them down. But once you've peppered the, the, uh, the grappler a little bit, you can start being a little more free with your legs. All right. Well, I think we gave you a good example of striker versus grappler, the mindset beside both. But you got to understand, this is mixed martial arts, and I just threw a joke out there. But yes, as, as a grappler, you are going to need some striking. Now, even as a striker, I need to know the basics of some things for grappling, right? I can't just sit there with high guards. I have to start learning clinch grips and stuff. But as we progress in this series, you'll start to get more of an understanding when we start working on the wall, different positions of clinching. And this is the whole fun of today's kind of entry topic of closing distance striker versus grappling. Any last points, Professor? No, just happy to be here. All right, there you have it. Make sure you keep liking and subscribing to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Make sure you support the channel sponsors. We got Hayabusa by going to Hayabusa Fight. They just got their new T3D boxing gloves, which are fantastic, very high end, and that foam in there, second to none. We have Perfect Sports Nutrition using code Bazooka20 gets you 20% off your supplements. And lately, make sure you head over because for the best shipping, go to iHerb to buy all your supplements from there. And last but not least, Bazooka Training. Dot com online curriculum taught by me every single Monday brand new videos home workouts bag workouts sparring drills for less than ten dollars a month brand new videos every single Monday from me now an archive library of close to 400 videos so every day watch a new video learn and progress in your martial arts journey we'll see you next time here at bazooka kickboxing and MMA Welcome to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA Online Training. I'm Bazooka Joe Valtellini, the owner here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Over the past year, I've designed and created a website to teach Bazooka curriculum at home and across the world. The purpose of this website is for you to one, hit your fitness and health goals, all while learning world-class martial arts instruction from me. 
The beautiful thing about this website, it's geared for all levels. So if you're learning martial arts for the first time as a beginner, we help you progress into the bigger stages. And if you're a pro fighter, guess what? We have different fight concepts for you to improve your tool set and your skills in the ring or cage. As the fastest rising kickboxing world champion and a lifelong martial artist with over 30 years of experience, I've been able to combine my passion for martial arts and teaching to create this website. This website's gonna give you some of the tricks, secrets, and inside look at some of the training I use to win my world title. Once you subscribe to this site, you're gonna be getting weekly training videos and tutorials that you can do from anywhere. The sections are broken up into three parts. The first is bag workout. So if you have a bag at home or at your gym, you can use these workouts to supplement your training. The second is at home workouts. A lot of us don't have the room for a bag or a bag in general, so these workouts are for no equipment needed and you can do them anywhere. And finally, the tutorial section. If you're having any problems with a specific technique or fight concept that's covered in any of the workouts, go to the tutorial section, learn the technique, and then go back to the workout, and this time, do it with proper technique. One of the added benefits once you subscribe is the forum section, where you can get a more personalized experience where you can ask questions, and I'll be able to go in there and answer them. It's all about building a team and a community of martial artists helping each other grow. So subscribe now to get access to all the videos plus more so you can be part of the squad here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA.